Good evening. Good evening. Uh, it's uh, Council Member Ben Kalos. Uh, that's at Ben Kalos on social media. Uh, I want to thank the folks we have attending over the Zoom, as well as on uh, Facebook and Twitter. Uh, if you are a person who RSVP, uh, please make sure that you uh, let us know that you are here. Uh, if you're on the Zoom, we will make sure we uh, take attendance, as it were, and make sure that you're here so that we can make sure to get you those go bags. Uh, you don't need to get one of the free go bags from our office, though it does help. I think at this point we've given away thousands and uh, something we did not promote publicly, but we will do so right now, is if you have one of our go bags from previous years, there's an N95 mask in there. And uh, this year we will also have masks in the bags. When it comes to, uh, you, you, you may overhear, uh, the new normal is we're all working from home as it were, so I'm home. Uh, I'm here with uh, my wife, with my daughter. We're in a one bedroom, uh, no, no home office here. And so you may overhear my daughter in the background. And honestly, I, I couldn't do this without her. She makes every day a lot better. Uh, and so we've started to see tropical storms and hurricanes coming earlier and earlier. Uh, usually we'd be seeing the, the first couple. Uh, by now we've already seen quite a number from Hurricane Faye. So to, to Isis uh, and so many others. And I do wanna just say to uh, take a moment to acknowledge the victims of recent natural disasters that have occurred recently. And this is over and above what we've been doing, uh, dealing with through this pandemic. But the, the purpose of a go bag is no matter what the emergency, you should have some supplies, medication and what have you ready and if you have one of our go bags, as I already mentioned, you might have already had uh, a, a N95 mask, uh, which would have been very helpful for you throughout this uh, pandemic. Uh, the go bags can be helpful for hurricanes, which we do see quite often, fires, which we see more often than we should, and we'll be doing fire prevention with the fire department as we get into October and heating season. Uh, earthquakes, we actually just saw an earthquake in New Jersey. Uh, if anyone ever thought that 2020 would be the year people are afraid of versus 2000 and the millennium bug, I, I wouldn't have believed you, as well as other uh, man-made situations that might happen. And uh, before I get into tonight's event, I also do want to make sure that I invite you. We do First Friday every month, 8 a.m. to uh, 10 a.m. We do it virtually. Uh, the next one will be on October 2nd. Uh, also, if you're interested in distributing masks, uh, or hand sanitizer. We have so much and we're looking for building captains. You can either give it out yourself or give it out through a neighborhood association or even through a building service worker. You can email bkalos at benkalos.com. Uh, for this year's event, we would typically have done this in person. We'll be running this uh, virtual presentation from six to seven. We have a hard cut off at seven. And then we'll be giving go bags out from my district office tomorrow, Tuesday, September 15th from 3 to 5 p.m. Uh, we'll work with you, make sure to RSVP ahead of time. And then we will have another opportunity on uh, Monday, September 21st from 3 to 5. Uh, we encourage you to come next week to pick up if possible. Uh, you may stay for the whole, of, you must stay for the whole event to get a bag and we will be giving out one bag per household due to limited availability this year. If you are on the wait list, my office will contact you tomorrow to let you know if we have extra go bags for you. We'll be taking attendance on this call, which I already mentioned. So if it isn't already, please update your name to your first name and last initial. You can do this by going to participants at the bottom of your screen and clicking the rename button. Tonight we'll hear from assembly member, Rebecca Seawright, council member, Keith Powers. And then we will hear from uh, our featured speaker, uh, commissioner Deanne Criswell. It was great to have her last year. and I think even the year before as well as deputy commissioner, Christina Farrell, and who has been an incredible partner and last but not least, our CERT Manhattan Chief, uh, Romano, who can, Romano Ponce, who can tell you about how you can join your community emergency response team. Uh, then we will uh, jump into the uh, presentation Q&A, and uh, we will start with uh, pre-submitted questions, then move to the chat box for, for the questions, and we have until 7 o'clock. Uh, so I'd like to please join me in welcoming uh, Assemblymember Rebecca Seawright. Thank you and good evening to all of you listening and watching in. Thank you to Councilmember Kalos and, and Councilman Powers. Uh, 
I'm pleased to co-sponsor the event to educate for emergency preparedness this evening. And I ask you all just to remember the three P's, prepare for the unexpected, plan for the worst case scenario, and pack your go bag. And as we have learned from this global pandemic that we were all living through, there is so much, no such thing as being too prepared. New Yorkers are resilient to the challenges posed by this COVID global pandemic. We've flattened the curve by following state guidelines across the board, which has led to our low infection rate. New York has conducted over 9 million tests to date. We're happy to report that Governor Andrew Cuomo has announced indoor dining in New York City will be allowed uh, September 30th with a 25% occupancy limit. All restaurants can now choose to reopen the subject to strict safety protocols, including temperature checks, contact information for tracing, face coverings, not seated, and other safety protocols. This is a critical step to helping our small businesses recover. New York is facing unprecedented challenges through a once in a lifetime public health crisis, an economic recession, rising unemployment, social injustices, and an eviction and homelessness crisis. Now is the time for New Yorkers to be united in their resolve and resilience. I wanna thank Commissioner Deanne Crystal, Deputy Commissioner Christina Farrell, and CERT Manhattan Chief Ramona Potts for sharing their expertise that you'll be hearing from each of them later tonight. Tomorrow, our district office on 79th is hosting a flu shot clinic and uh, we ask you all to call and sign up. But again, thank you to council member Kalos and your great leadership. And I hope we see a cameo appearance of your cat and your daughter tonight. Thank you, Ben. Uh, thank, thank you, Rebecca. And in unrelated news, I just wanted to share that uh, there is an election uh, this November. It is perhaps the most important election of our lives. Uh, you can go online now, 25 days out from the election to, re to register if you haven't registered before. And uh, you can also request an absentee, be absentee ballot uh, to vote uh, by mail. Anyone can do so, thanks to legislation Assemblymember Rebecca C. Wright helped pass. And uh, the City Board of Elections finally uh, uh, implemented a law I passed in 2016 for an absentee ballot tracker. I know folks might have concerns. This way you'll be able to see if they got your request, when they mail your absentee ballot, where if you request now, it's gonna be a little bit, and then whether or not they actually receive your absentee ballot. So please remember to go out and vote. I'd like to now turn it over to our New York City Emergency Management Commissioner, Tian Criswell, who's here tonight with Deputy Commissioner for External Affairs, Christina Farrell. All right, thank you, Councilmember Kalos. Good evening, everybody. My name is Deanne Criswell, and I'm the Commissioner for New York City Emergency Management. And I know that the video is a little far away, so just a wave real quick so you can see where I'm at here. Um, thank you for inviting uh, my team and me here today to discuss how you can become more prepared for emergencies. As you may know, this event is very timely as we are almost halfway through September, the month designated as National Preparedness Month. And even though this September may look different than previous ones, it's still a really good time to take a few minutes and write an emergency preparedness plan for you, your family, your pets. And if you already have one, take a few minutes to review it and see what parts may be updated, especially given today's circumstances. Councilmember Kalos, I'd like to thank you again for continuing to hold this event, um, even though virtually, I think it's really important that we continue to get together. Um, you've always been such a faithful partner with New York City Emergency Management. And every year, Councilmember Kalos designates some of his discretionary funds to purchase go bags to help his constituents prepare for emergencies, which is amazing. He has done that this year as well, and I understand that by participating in, with us tonight in this event, you'll be able to receive a go bag from him, and it's really terrific that he takes the time to assist you all um, with so a really big thank you to you and your team. Um, Assemblymember Rebecca Seawright is also here this evening, and I want to thank you for your dedication to emergency preparedness. I liked your three Ps. I think it was plan, prepare, and pack. Excellent way to remember it. 
And I'd also like to thank Ramona Ponce, the Manhattan Borough Coordinator for New York City Community Emergency Response Team, CERT, for joining us here tonight. Ramona has been a terrific leader with the CERT program for many, many years and has done countless emergency preparedness presentations in that time. CERT volunteers, like everyone else in the city, have learned how to run meetings and events virtually like we are tonight. And although they have also been helping in person with events across the city, assisting with feeding vulnerable New Yorkers, as well as distributing face coverings amongst other tasks during these times. And now during 2020, a year like unlike any others, and of course presented significant challenges for us all to be prepared. When we held this event last year, no one was using terms like social distancing or face coverings or even Zoom. This year has starkly demonstrated why it is so important to be prepared for all emergencies and how emergency plans must be flexible and able to adjust over time. One thing though does stay constant, that's the need for accurate, timely information. And if you haven't already, I urge you all to sign up for Notify NYC, the City of New York's free emergency alert system. You can receive texts, emails, phone calls. You can access it via Twitter or download the Notify NYC app. This system will keep you up to date on all types of emergencies, including local ones in your neighborhood, as well as citywide ones like the COVID-19 virus. It is also available in multiple languages and many of the messages are available in American Sign Language as well. If you have not signed up, visit nyc.gov backslash notify NYC, or you can always call 311 to sign up as well. So again, thank you for taking the time this evening to learn more about how to prepare for emergencies. Thank you, Councilmember Kalos and your team for putting this event together. I will be available to answer questions along with my team after the presentation. Before we start the presentation, I wanna give a huge thank you to uh, Commissioner Deanne Criswell. Uh, they do all the work. It's just something we've been doing for quite some time. I also want to just take a moment to say one of my favorite things about being an elected official is getting to work with a certain person. And in fact, one of the best things about living in the district is, is having her as a representative. And, and I will just say that even before I was an elected official, she, she, she's pretty accessible to anyone. And I probably appreciated the same level of access, uh, but she is literally on my speed dial. I was on the phone with her at I believe nine or 10 o'clock last night, trying to help, uh, help homeless people and make sure that they had a place to sleep last night. And she, she is there for everyone and anyone, and she's always willing to take tough positions. So if you could join me in welcoming State Senator Liz Krueger. Thank you very much, Ben, for that very lovely introduction. And I have to admit, one of the great things about being an elected official over here on the east side of Manhattan is that I get to share this work with really other excellent committed people like you and your team so that we can try to work together to make government work for people. And I don't wanna take any of the time up tonight and I'm actually supposed to be on another Zoom in a few minutes, but I wanted to come on just to say hello to everyone, to thank you for doing these kinds of town halls. Um, I do a lot of town halls by Zoom now. We all are trying this as a new model to communicate with people. And I have to say, the opportunity to have experts such as you have tonight speaking to us, letting us ask questions, I actually think is a really terrific model um, that is ensuring that more people get to be civically participating, even at a time where we feel like we're locked in our homes. And that I also always love hearing your child behind you when we have these evening events because you multitask as a responsible parent as well as a responsible elected. Um, and that's another part of the humanity. We're all getting to know each other a little better from our apartments and our homes with our families during this pretty crazy time. So thank you to the people you have presenting tonight. And, um, and no doubt we will find some new cr crisis to work on later in the week. So thank you, Ben. Uh, th thank you, Senator. I'll turn it back over to the uh, emergency management to do their presentation. Great. Good evening. My name is Christina Farrell, I'm Deputy Commissioner for External Affairs. And I think uh, 
Councilman Kalos' staff has our presentation that they're going to pull up. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Awesome. Okay. Uh, so, as we, that's just the title slide. We can go to the second slide. It says who we are and what we do. Great. One moment. Uh, so for those uh, New Yorkers who aren't uh, um, familiar with emergency management, we've been around since the mid-90s. We started as part of the mayor's office and became an independent agency uh, in 2002. Uh, our mission is there on the screen. It's to help New Yorkers before, during, and after emergencies through preparedness, education, and response. A big part of that is events like this, and so we are very thankful to the councilman and the other electives for putting this together um, in a regular year. We do about 900 events in person all over the city, all different times of the year, the day, the week, um, to all different types of audiences. And we do uh, about 40 or 50, 60 events right just in September. Obviously things are different a little bit, but it's no less important. It's even more important that people become prepared. Uh, we also respond to emergencies, citywide large emergencies, but also localized things. There was a five alarm fire in South Brooklyn that we were involved in this weekend. There are our water main breaks and other types of things. And then also things like storms, tropical storm Isaias. We're unfortunately up to, I believe, tropical storm Vicky, which is number 21. Um, and if you consider that in 2012, uh, Hurricane Sandy hit on October 29th, 2012. That's a little scary when you think about that. Uh, so we will make it through the hurricane season together, uh, but that's definitely something front and center on our radar right now. Next slide. So tonight we want to encourage everyone to make a plan as uh, the assembly member and others have said, and we have many resources uh, on our website that people can go to. You can go to nyc.gov slash ready New York. You can call 311 and ask for the materials to be sent to you. Um, and these materials will, and you can also download them from online. You, these materials will help you to build a plan. You can go through and personalize it for yourself. And then also we encourage people to gather supplies and stay informed. Next slide, please. Uh, so a few things about writing a plan. Um, everybody's plan will have a few things that are the same. The commissioner mentioned signing up for Notify NYC, which uh, we encourage everyone to do. I know that Councilman Kalos and the state senator received that because they will write to us, to the Antigov unit, and ask us about different things going on in their district. So we appreciate their activism. Uh, but everybody should sign up for Notify NYC. You can get it all the way from a landline call, um, all the way down to downloading the app or following on Twitter. And you can get as many or as few notifications as you want. Uh, but it really is the cornerstone of your plan because then you know uh, what we're planning for weather or things that may be coming, and then you also can learn about no notice types of events. Um, once you understand the kind of things that happen, you can start to write down your plan. Um, I bet a lot of people have done this this year, uh, maybe through a plan or maybe just, um, you know, at the spur of the moment. Um, so for example, if the subways aren't running, you need a transportation plan, or if you're not going to take the subway or the bus for some reason, uh, you need a communications plan, you need to know when to evacuate. So we have um, Ready New York, My Emergency Plan, which is really a comprehensive guide. The woman in the picture is holding it. That's available on our website. And this will take you through, if you take a pen and you go through this, or if you do it online, it'll take you through all these different um, areas of how you can put your plan together. Next slide. Uh, so basically, if there's an emergency, there are two things you might do. You might evacuate uh, because it's obvious, like there's a fire or something in your building, or because emergency officials are telling you to evacuate, um, such as during a coastal storm evacuation. Or you may be told to, or you may decide to shelter in place, which means what you um, probably have been doing for the last six months, which is pretty much staying home. And so uh, when you're doing either of those, you wanna be prepared and you wanna have supplies and materials. Uh, you're off to a great start tonight. You will receive a go bag. Uh, in the coming days, which you can then personalize and put together, but you should also have an emergency supply kit in your home. Uh, we know that people don't necessarily have huge homes, 
um, in Manhattan and across the city, uh, but everybody has a little bit of room, some space in a closet or um, under your bed or, or someplace that's easy to get to, but you can put together some supplies, things like a flashlight, extra batteries, some non-perishable food, some water, uh, an emergency radio that may not need electricity, um, those kind of items. So um, if you go through the book, you can see in detail all the different things that we ask people to put together. And then you also have to think about your family and your situation. The commissioner mentioned pets. Uh, if you have a dog or a cat or guinea pigs or whatever, um, you want to have some extra supplies. If you think you may evacuate, you want to make sure you have a leash. You have copies of their inoculations and other papers so you can bring them with you. Um, and if you have children, they may have special needs. If you live with a senior, uh, and certainly at this time, we have special considerations, things like face coverings, um, you know, things if you're going, going to evacuate that you want to stay safe with. Next slide. Uh, and as we mentioned, um, you know, you took the first step by coming here tonight. You're obviously keyed in and interested about emergency preparedness, so we thank you. Uh, there are many ways to receive information in the city. Uh, we mentioned Notify NYC, emergency management, and many of our partners are very active on social media. There have been many, many, many press conferences this year by many officials that have shared a lot of important information. Um, and, you know, there are more ways. I know that uh, Councilman Kalo sends out a newsletter, and I'm sure his colleagues do, where he takes a lot of the information from us and other agencies and pulls that out. Uh, so, you know, you really have to decide what's the best way for you to get your information, um, but that is important so you understand what's coming, where we are in the hurricane season, and what you might need to do. Um, and as you can see in the picture, we'd like to start with very young. Um, we're currently working with the Department of Education to figure out how we're gonna do presentations uh, virtually this year, since we obviously won't be in the schools, but we start with pre-K and 3K and go all the way to senior centers. So this is really a family activity. And um, you know, we have resources where you can help. We even have our own superhero, Ready Girl. So you can start with uh, your children and help them prepare. Next slide. Uh, so mentioning a little bit about hurricanes, this is an incredibly active season. I think there's seven or eight storms being monitored right now. Um, you can rest assured that at New York City Emergency Management, the second we get um, an inkling that there may be a storm coming, we start to monitor it and look as it comes. And if anything seems like it might even get close to the city, um, you know, we are on top of it very early. We talk to the National Weather Service several times a day, every day, but when there are storms, we um, talk to them almost constantly. We bring in the National Hurricane Center and um, become much more active. So uh, uh, hurricanes are coming, um, you know, we continue to look, as I mentioned, we're up to Vicki, so we will see how the rest of the season plays out. Um, but as we've seen, it only takes one storm for serious consequences and parts of the Upper East Side are in a coastal storm evacuation zone. Roosevelt Island, uh, which I know is represented here tonight, uh, is the most uh, potentially impacted since it is an island in the district. But uh, there are some parts of the Upper East Side closer to um, the East River that can also be in a storm. So it's very important to know your zone. You can go to nyc.gov slash know your zone, or you can call 311. Uh, you put in your address and then you will find out which zone you're in. You find out which hurricane evacuation centers you can go to any evacuation center in the city, but you can find out which ones are most close to you and you can get more tips on how to specifically prepare for a hurricane. Next slide. Uh, so this is what I was referencing. This is the map. Uh, it's a little small. You probably would want to zoom in online and, and look at the Upper East Side or go put your address in there. But that shows from red being um, the first that we would evacuate zone one up to the green, which is zone six. Uh, where the evacuation zones are in the city. Um, there are six zones. We, um, they're each about 500,000 people. We changed it after Sandy, so we would have a lot more um, flexibility because evacuating even one zone is a Herculean task. It's a lot for all the residents. It's a lot for the city. Um, so we want to be, we have to balance uh, the forecast and what's coming with um, you know, the serious impact of evacuating hundreds of thousands of people. So uh, we, like I said, we take that very seriously and uh, we look at these zones, but that is something to consider when you're making your emergency plan. Next slide. 
Uh, so as I mentioned, um, back uh, once this started in March, I think one of the first things that the commissioner and her team did was to start looking at the cascading impacts because it was clear this COVID was not going to be a one, two, three week at, um, emergency. And so we started thinking about what would evacuation centers look like and what, what supplies might we need that we don't have. What are we going to do when it's hot if people don't want to go to cooling centers or go, what if movie theaters and malls and all the things that shut down that people might use to escape the heat. Uh, so we've been looking at our emergency stockpile. We have added different things to it. We have looked at our uh, coastal storm evacuation plan, looked at centers, how to make them socially distanced and safe. Uh, so we do have these plans in place. And if, um, if we were to call an evacuation, we are confident that we would be able to do it safely and keep the COVID guidelines in mind. Next slide. Uh, these are a couple of the programs. Ready New York is what we've talked about. I know my good friend Ramona is going to talk about CERT and all the amazing things CERT did. And then Partners in Preparedness is a private sector program that we run where we work with businesses and organizations to help them prepare their employees and their customers. So if you're interested in any of these programs or anything we talk about tonight, um, you can always reach out to emergency management, reach out to Councilman Kalos, and we're happy to get more information to get you a presentation or what you may need to help others prepare. And I think that brings us to our last slide. Thank you very much uh, to Deputy uh, Commissioner Christina Farrell. Uh, I learned something new every year, and I guess this is our seven year, seventh year doing it. Uh, and that is my daughter. We are negotiating bedtime at the moment. <laughs> uh, we have community emergency response teams here on the Upper East Side, and when danger comes and most of us run home to be with our families and to grab our go bags, our CERT teams are there uh, to help with emergencies, to help with different large scale events throughout the district. And uh, we have so many great teams, we provide some modest funding to them. And so uh, we'll end the presentation and turn it over to CERT Manhattan Chief Ramona uh, Ponce. Thank you very much, Council Member Kalos. It's such a great honor to be included in this uh, luminous roster tonight of speakers. Uh, I'm just going to say a few words about our program, uh, the Community Emergency Response Team Program of New York City is the volunteer arm of New York City Emergency Management. Uh, we are a trained core. Uh, we go through five weeks of training, 30 hours total, uh, to help us uh, prepare to assist New York City emergency management and first responders in case there's an emergency, but also to assist with planned events uh, such as uh, the New York City Marathon or the Five Borough Bike Tour. And we also educate our neighbors uh, all over the city to be prepared in case there's an emergency. Uh, the same kind of presentation that you saw tonight, we can do in your community for your tenant association, your house of worship, uh, a group of friends. Whatever group you have, uh, we are local. There are teams all over the city. And in Manhattan, the Upper East Side is especially blessed to have a very large number of volunteers. And many of them are specially trained to go out and uh, talk to your group about how to prepare. So we are always looking for more friends to come and join us, more of our neighbors to help uh, help ourselves get prepared. We're, we're the ones who have the agency to make it happen for ourselves and for our friends and families and neighborhoods. So if you would like to come and join us, we would be very pleased to have you do so. Uh, you can go to uh, oem.nyc.gov uh, slash cert to sign up. 
uh, or you can call 311 and they will uh, put you in touch with someone who can help you. When you uh, join with uh, New York City Emergency Management CERT, you are trained in uh, high rise safety, in subway safety, the various things that make New York City very special and something unto its own. Uh, you will be trained in disaster medical operations, in uh, volunteer management, and in a host of other great specialties, things that uh, will assist not only in, the, uh, in an emergency situation where, uh, which we have really not come across very often in the city, I'm very pleased to say, uh, but being prepared is half the battle, which is what we hear from time to time tonight. Uh, all situations, preparation is the key. So uh, when you join us, after you graduate, you are given some tools to help. And I have our bag, which is our response bag here with me tonight. It has various uniform pieces that are needed in certain kinds of situations, uh, emergency vest, hard hat, uh, and other things like gloves, flashlight, etc. And this response bag is very useful uh, for things like search and rescue and uh, other things. In any case, it's a great program. We'd be very pleased to have you join us. Sign up when you can. Thank you very much. And any questions you have, always pleased to answer. Thank you. Uh, in a pre-pandemic world, this is where I would say let's hear it. For Ramona Ponce and just all the members of the CERT teams, please consider uh, joining. And so we received a, a number of questions. Uh, I was going to ask uh, the uh, uh, Commissioner, uh, Deputy Commissioner Christina Farrell, about uh, the the comic. And so, I, but I did not see the comic in the presentation. I'm a big comic book nerd. If anyone's ever read about it in New York Post or anywhere else. A uh, big fan of Captain America. Uh, what can you tell us about the comic? That is my personal question. Then I'll get all the questions that people submitted. All right, I'm going to turn it to Christina. This is her her project. So, uh, so as I mentioned, we do have a uh, superhero, Ready Girl. She got her superpowers during Hurricane Sandy and has been traveling around helping children prepare and uh, I guess children of all ages prepare for eight years now. Um, so a couple of years ago, we teamed up with Marvel and we were able to do a Ready Girl comic book with Marvel, which was great. And it's available on our website. You can go to nyc.gov slash ready New York and download it or you can call 301. And the super exciting news is that next week, September 22nd, we actually are launching two more Ready Girl comic books. Uh, there's one about her adventures when she goes to the West Coast. Um, and then there is her origin story, which we were told the third comic book is always the origin story. So we didn't want to break with tradition. We're actually doing a Ready Girl reading with the Queen's Library on September 22nd. We'd be happy to do it with the New York Public Library if they want to do it too. Uh, so we will send you the link, Councilman, but Ready Girl is alive and well. It is um, helping children during the pandemic prepare. Thank you very, very much to the extent I can be there for any part of the rollout and uh, bring uh, Ready Girl to our libraries or to virtual readings. Uh, if you didn't know, we, we also have other heroes who, who read stories. We, we have a drag queen story hour that we sponsor here in the district and uh, would love to, to add Ready Girl to that uh, lineup of reading opportunities. I'm gonna jump into some of the uh, hard hitting questions. I have about six questions we received from residents. So we may be wrapping up a little bit early and we do have one Q and A question uh, in the chat. So I'll, I'll actually uh, start with the one in the chat uh, cause I, and I may be able to jump in, but we have a question from Renee about affordable housing during COVID-19. Um, and so is the question just basically what kind of affordable housing in COVID-19? 
I, I, hold on, let me see if we can promote Renee so she can ask for herself. Renee, I have pressed the button that says you should be able to speak. I'm unmuting you now. And we need your permission to speak. Okay, we are having trouble promoting Renee so that she can speak, but I'll, I'll just best guess about affordable housing is just I think a lot of people are concerned about affordable housing. And so I guess I'll, I'll do my best to field it, which is um, it's really hard to get affordable housing in the city. It feels like you actually have to win a lottery and that's actually the case. So um, what we've done is we actually had a presentation on it before and we'll actually probably do it again in October. It sounds like a good idea to do so. Uh, which is um, there's more affordable housing in existence than they can build right now. And so we, we, I wrote a law, Local Law 64, which put all the existing affordable housing online on Housing Connect 2.0. And if you go to Housing Connect 2.0, create a profile, it will notify you anytime we build new housing that you can get. Plus, depending on which neighborhoods uh, you select, uh, it will get you into a lottery for uh, hundreds of thousands of affordable units coming up. So wanted to uh, thank you for that question and we'll go to the regularly scheduled questions that came in before. Uh, so first question, how can we be prepared as a New Yorker for weather related and social injustice emergencies? Are there resources for children needing school supplies? That is a great question and um, I can start, you know, it's things that we talked about um, already this evening in our presentations, right? So in order to prepare for weather related emergencies in the prepare side, a big component of that is being able to get timely information. And so again, really encourage everybody to sign up for Notify NYC. So as weather emergencies are approaching, you can get um, the most direct and relevant information about what actions that you should take. Um, and then again, um, once you have that, you need to have your plan so you know what you're gonna do. If we, if we do issue an evacuation order and you find that you live in an evacuation zone, you need to have that plan so you know where you can go. Um, as far as um, resources for children needing school supplies, uh, maybe Councilmember Kalos, you might have a little bit more information. Uh, what I would say is, you know, we're looking at blended learning opportunities this year. And schools are going to be both uh, in person and virtual. And so the demand for school supplies is a little bit different than probably what we've seen in the past. Um, I'm certain um, we can get back with more information on that um, if we need to. Great. Uh, the next question uh, is, uh, where are neighborhood safe centers in our neighborhood on the Upper East Side near 93rd Street? Uh, and what is my zone if I live on East 92nd Street? So great question. Somebody that really wants to know where they should go if they have to evacuate. And again, the first thing that you need to do is go to nyc.gov slash know your zone and you can type in that address or you can call 311 and they'll let you know which evacuation zone you live in. Um, there are 10 evacuation centers in Manhattan and they are spread out throughout the borough. But when you go to our website, um, nyc.gov backslash know your zone, you'll be able to find the one that is closest to you. I just pulled it up on my own computer, and it looks like most of the neighborhood is, is, is in a uh, non-colored zone. Uh, there are some parts, um, it looks like I'm just looking. If you are close to asphalt green and, uh, and you're in the 90s, uh, it, there are parts that are zone two, there are blocks that are zone four, there are blocks that are zone five, and blocks that are zone six. But if you uh, live past Third Avenue, you are not in a zone. And if you live between 81st Street and 59th Street, uh, between the river and First Avenue, you may be zone six or zone four. There is one or two zone twos. If you're on Roosevelt Island, most of the island is zone three. If you are at Kohler Hospital, you are zone two. 
Uh, but we really urge you to just uh, go to the nyc.gov slash knowyourzone and uh, you'll be able to look it up immediately. Uh, in case of a hurricane, please tell us shelter locations for homeless people temporarily living in hotels in NYC. Another great question. So, you know, through the COVID-19 response, uh, one of the things that we did was to de-densify our homeless shelters or our congregate settings so we could help limit the spread of COVID-19. And, and one of those actions was to use hotel rooms to support our homeless population. So if people are temporarily living in hotels and that hotel happens to be in an evacuation zone, and we direct that that hotel be evacuated, the city will work directly with the residents or the individuals that are staying in that hotel to make arrangements to help move them outside of the evacuation zone. So it would not be um, unlike if there was a homeless shelter that happened to be in an evacuation zone. We'll do the same thing if they are staying in a hotel as well. Thank you. And just again, I, all I did was go to nyc.gov slash knowyourzone and I pulled up the map and so uh, we do have two evacuation centers. One is at PS59, uh, which is at 233 East 56th Street. Uh, and if you're in the northern part of the district, you might be closer to IS88 at 215 West 114th Street. And uh, there is also two on the west side, one at Lewis Brandeis High School at 145 West 84th and at Lincoln Square at Martin Luther King Jr. High School at 122 Amsterdam. And that looks like most of them in uh, our part of Manhattan. Uh, we have a bunch more questions coming on. Uh, we have a question from Jan Evans about whether there are any CPR classes available. I'll need to turn to Christina and see if she knows what the schedule might be. Uh, so we work with the Red Cross. Um, they are the ones that do CPR. Right now, CPR is our understanding is being done virtually, but they have made some accommodations because we actually have gotten this question a couple times. Uh, so if you go to the Red Cross of Radio New York's website, uh, I think there's information there, but we can also get information to the councilmen on specifically what they're doing with Red Cross, with CPR. Okay, so uh, Jan, just follow up with us. We will be expecting an email from OEM with some CPR classes and we can even include it in our newsletter for the rest of the neighborhood. Um, we, have, we have one last question uh, that was pre-submitted, which is how will COVID-19 impact and how has it already complicated emergency preparedness? Yeah, I mean, we have learned so much this year about um, the things that we might need to adjust in, in this new age of COVID-19. And uh, again, as Deputy Commissioner Farrell said earlier, you know, one of the first things that we did was take a look at all of our existing plans to determine what adaptations we needed to make so we can ensure that the uh, health and safety of New Yorkers um, was first and foremost, and we had all of the necessary provisions in place to support that. And so for things like our uh, evacuation centers um, during a coastal storm or our cooling centers that we use throughout the summer, we put measures in place to make sure that we could protect uh, New Yorkers. And so that is increased social distancing requirements, reduced occupancy so we could support those social distancing requirements, um, screening so we could determine whether somebody is coming into either a cooling center or an evacuation center if they're ill and making arrangements to transport them somewhere else where they can be safe if they are, uh, making sure that we're providing um, face coverings and cleaning for these facilities. And so a number of, of um, adaptations that we've had to make um, again across all of our plans to provide for the safety of individuals. You know, another one of the big things that um, I'm really excited about that we were also able to do this summer was we also knew that those individuals that are the most susceptible to COVID-19 were also those that were the most vulnerable for heat-related emergencies. And the best way to protect individuals um, from both of those was to keep them safe and in their home. But we know that a number of New Yorkers don't have air conditioning in their homes. And so we were able to 
um, secure funding and we put in to date over 70,000 air conditioners in homes of seniors across New York City and many of these uh, are living in the Upper East Side and East Harlem so we can help keep them safe and we've received numerous letters back thanking us for um, for this program and one even just today that said I, I think that you saved my life this summer by by putting this air conditioner in and it was a really great program of bringing different city partners together in order to execute that and at the same time, we also petitioned um, New York State to provide some additional assistance with their utility bills. And they came through with that as well. So that way, the uh, individuals that received a new air conditioner did not have uh, increased costs as a result to operate those. And so we're also encouraging everybody as well to continue to prepare themselves in this uh, COVID-19 environment and make sure that you have things like face coverings and hand sanitizer in your go bags. Um, and you know where safe places are to go. So again, we've learned so much throughout the year. Um, a global pandemic caused us to have to look at all of our plans and make adjustments along the way. And we will continue to do that until you know, there's a vaccination for everybody and we can make sure that all New Yorkers are safe. Thank you. Uh, we have a question for an, an anonymous, it's, uh, sorry. I see three people who have their hands up. Uh, if you can submit your questions through the Q&A feature, we will get to them. Uh, at this point, we've answered about 36 questions. So uh, we're moving right along with about 13 minutes left in the presentation. I'll also take a moment uh, to join the state senator in, in thanking uh, the people you see as other panelists who are not necessarily speaking, but helping the show move along. Uh, you have the operator, who is my uh, chief of staff, Abby Damsky, who puts together our events, Kayla Shelby, who does our social media and our newsletter, uh, Debbie Lightbody, who leads our constituent service team, and Wilfredo Lopez, who reach, leads our legislative uh, division. Uh, and so uh, the question I have is from this anonymous attendee. I'd like to assemble my own go back. There are a couple of folks here who would like to share this presentation with others. Uh, can we go over what to put in our own bag? Absolutely. I'm going to turn this one over to Christina because she will give you the most accurate information about what to put in your go bag. Sure. So uh, we are very happy if people would like to put together their own go bag. I think most people have a backpack or a gym bag around their house um, that could be converted to this use. Uh, there, um, we have many suggestions of things. Um, so first of all, you should have a copy of some form of ID, uh, like a copy of your license or a passport or something like that, because if you run out with a fire in the middle of the night, um, obviously it's very helpful to be able to prove who you are. Also copies of your homeowners or renters insurance, any kind of information like that, um, medical insurance, copies of those things, or you know, a file in your phone or something. Uh, we also encourage people to put in uh, some small denominations of cash, so like one at five dollar denominations. I don't know how many people were here in 2003 uh, during the citywide blackout, but you may remember that um, ATMs and other things run on electricity, and so anybody walking around with a $50 bill, um, I don't think other change back that night. So that's helpful. Uh, as the uh, councilman said before, and as we've all learned, um, it's good to have some kind of mask or face covering, even if we're not concerned with COVID. Uh, if you were unfortunately involved in something like a fire or a building explosion, there obviously can be unsafe air or questions about the air. So you want to stay safe with that. We encourage people to have a pair of work gloves, small radio, battery, flashlight, a whistle. Uh, so if you have to be found or something, you don't want to be screaming. Uh, a bottle of water, some non perishable food, first aid, um, a pad and paper if you need to write things down, and um, copies of your prescriptions, an old pair of eyeglasses. And those are kind of like the basic things. That's also on page 13 of um, Ready New York, My Emergency Plan. So you could, because I know I speak pretty quickly. Um, but then also I would encourage people to put in um, things for your family or for you. Uh, you know, if you're gonna go to a school or an evacuation center or something, you might be there for quite a while, not a lot to do. You might not have a phone charger, although it'd be good to put a phone charger in here, portable charger, so you might want to put a book, a crossword puzzle, book, um, you know, things like that, a couple things, not to make it too heavy, but, but really some common sense items and then a few more items to, to make it 
uh, less stressful as you are going through the emergency. And then I would, Council Member Kalis, I would add one more thing. Um, as a pet owner, I would create a similar bag for your pet with some food and uh, some toys and things to keep your pet occupied as well. Always a good idea. Thank you. Uh, are you cat or dog? Dog. I, I'm a cat person. This this may be a problem. No, it's I, I, I'm a pet person. Uh, I'm a pet person. <laughs> Me too. Uh, and and just uh, please consider adopting if you if you haven't already. Uh, what do you call it? Um, be, before my daughter, my my cat was uh, pretty highly ranked. She was the first feline of the Upper East Side. Uh, <laughs> now my my daughter is in charge at the house, and uh, the the cat has come to terms with that. Uh, I want to just share that from the. Uh, C. Griffin, she shared that much appreciated. I live in the Bronx and looking at the list of things you should have on hand, I have to tell you most of that stuff I don't even have. I would definitely not make it an emergency. This is a really scary thought, especially when the income you have uh, doesn't allow you to afford these things. And so this is part of why we do this program. I, I hope that you were able to RSVP early and that we're able to get you a bag and that you can come by our office. Uh, and if not, we can try to see how we can get one to you. And this is why we make the funds available to OEM, who puts together hundreds, if not thousands, of these bags every year. Uh, uh, also, we, we had uh, Jewel share that she's willing to be one of our captains uh, for mask and hand sanitizer distribution at the Eastward Missionary Baptist Church. So we will be in touch with you. We will work with you. We literally have hundreds of uh, surgical masks and gallons. We have these giant gallon jugs. We have like a lot of them to give so that folks can refill their hand sanitizer uh, bottles. We have about uh, two questions left. If you want to get your questions in, now is your, your last call. We have about eight minutes left in the call. Uh, we, we have a question about, uh, about the alerts that you mentioned. Uh, how does one get alerts if you don't have a mobile phone and uh, on which to download an app? Can, I st can they still get Notify NYC alerts without a mobile phone or a smartphone from the app? You can get alerts still um, by calling 311. You can get signed up and uh, he's gonna correct me if I get this wrong. Um, and then when we send out a Notify NYC message, they will get a phone call on their landline in their home. Did I get that right? Yeah, that's it. And the, I think our, our last question, I see the three hands, but I'm hoping they can type in their questions into the Q&A. Uh, last question from, uh, okay, we just got another one. Uh, last, uh, previous last question is from ES. What does it mean if we aren't in an evacuation zone? So it's a great question. So the evacuation zones are based on storm surge. Uh, that will result from some type of a coastal storm. So what an evacuation zone means is that you could expect to see some type of coastal storm surge flooding in your area. Uh, it does not mean that you would not be prone to localized street flooding or flash flooding if we had heavy rains or the winds that would be associated with a hurricane. And so just because you're not in a hurricane evacuation zone does not mean that it would be safe for you to go outside in the middle of a, of a um, storm that is approaching and you should still take a great deal of precaution. So again, the evacuation zones are just those areas that will most likely flood from storm surge as a result of that coastal storm, but there's still wind um, damage that may occur across the city, um, as well as significant rains with localized street flooding. Thank you. Uh, we, we have a note from Avram Allen David. Uh, I've been learning about severe climate change, specifically how it affects our shoreline since I took environmental science at Seward Park High School. Uh, so I, I guess to that end, I guess the question is, will climate change have an effect on the, uh, the uh, emergency zone, the, the, the zones and our shorelines? You know, climate, climate change is definitely one of those things that is always in discussion and we look at continuously um, on whether or not it's impacting the um, increase in the hazards that we're facing. And, 
I am not a climate scientist, um, but I do read the studies that come out, and it's definitely one of those things that we need to be very aware of um, and do our due diligence as, as um, New Yorkers to make sure that we can keep our communities safe. Um, what I will say is though, the National Hurricane Center and the Army Corps of Engineers, they do studies periodically to evaluate the um, impact of storm surge and what the evacuation zones might look like to take into account any changes to the coastline, whether it's from climate change or previous events. And then they will update those storm surge models, which could impact our, um, our evacuation zones. So for example, after Hurricane Sandy, one of those studies had been completed and our evacuation zones were updated to address those changes that, um, that we saw from those studies, as well as we created additional zones so we could reach more people. So we look through the, use our scientists that are out there that give us more information and we make updates to our current plans as necessary. I want to thank our uh, OEM commissioner, uh, Deanne Criswell. I want to thank uh, Deputy Commissioner Christina Farrell for our seventh year doing this and uh, look forward to doing it uh, next year and hopefully from then on and continuing this tradition. I hope you all learned as much as I did and uh, stay safe, be prepared and uh, see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.